I want to thank you so much for tuning in this morning as we uh, gather together and worship our risen Lord. Thank you. It's, this is Sam Jones Memorial United Methodist Church, and this is the 10 a.m. celebration service, and we're so glad that you tuned in. Uh, you can help us out as you watch this video, if you would be so kind. If you're watching it on Facebook, if you'd hit the share button, that would be very helpful. And if you're watching it on YouTube and you have not already subscribed to our channel, please do that. That will help us out a good little bit. Before we get started this morning, I want to share with you just a few announcements, if I can. Uh, we continue to do uh, virtual services, uh, worshiping at home uh, through the month of August. We've got a few things coming up that I think you'll be uh, find to be fun and uh, uh, helpful. We're going to have a parking lot service on the 26th. That's on uh, s uh, Wednesday at 7 o'clock, and we're going to bring in some special praise uh, worship leaders, and we're going to have some fun. There'll be some activities for the children, all socially distant of course, there'll be a, a devotional at that time, uh, some refreshments. It'll just be a time to get together uh, in our parking lot. 
there are several opportunities for mission. If you're looking for something to uh, really do that makes a difference in people's life, uh, let me share with you a couple of the things that are going on right now. Uh, we are participating with Douglas Street United Methodist Church in a program called Farm to Family. It's where they take the produce, the excess produce that's not been used because so many of the restaurants still aren't at full capacity, and they package them up into boxes. A truck comes, and we unload the boxes, uh, the truck, and then cars come, people in need, and we take the food and we load it up in their cars, uh, the trunks of their cars. It's no contact, uh, but it's a, a great uh, service. Uh, also, we bring the food truck out and we feed folks to go uh, boxes of hot food uh, that day as well. We do that every Monday. So if you're interested in helping out either with the food boxes or cooking on the food truck, uh, call me or call the church office. We'll be glad to give you the information uh, how to get involved in that. Also, since school has started back, uh, and I know you're praying for our schools, uh, we start back with backpack buddies real soon. And so in the past, we had committees that got together and, and did that. We can't do it that way anymore. So we're asking for families. If your family would like to help pack the bags to go in the backpacks, um, it would, it's great. A family of four could probably do it in an hour and a half. Uh, and if you'd like to volunteer to do that uh, you know, a couple of times, that would be fantastic. Fantastic. You can call the church office and we'll be glad to give you information on how you can uh, do that. Again, thank you so much for worshiping with us this day. I'm going to turn it over to the praise team and just invite you to worship God this beautiful day. Good morning, and this is our opportunity to worship, so let's begin by going to our God in prayer. Holy Spirit, we invite you here into this time, into this place into each heart that is worshiping now, God. We just desire your ways within. We want to give you all that we have to give. This is our time to praise and worship you, God, and we also will receive whatever you have for us. So come with us and then go with us as we step into the rest of this day. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. And, you know, one of the things that we can be easily reminded of is that the same power that was present with Christ when he walked on the face of the earth, when he raised the dead, and the same power that raised Jesus from the dead himself is exactly the same power that we have in facing whatever uncertainties, whatever future lies before us. All that, that is within God's scope. The same power is right here with us. So wherever you are right now and whatever time it is when you're worshiping, you're invited to stand and sing along with the praise band. And the song is Same Power. I can see the waters raging at my feet. I can feel the breath of those surrounding me. I can hear the sound of nations rising up. We will not be overtaken. We will not be overcome. I can walk down this dark and painful road. I can face every fear of the unknown. I can. All God's children singing out, we will not be overtaken, we will not be overcome. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave, the same power that commands the dead to wake, lives in us, lives in us. true in his strength there is nothing we can do yes we know there are greater things in store we will not be overtaken we will not be overcome the same power that rose jesus from the grave the same 
once again come before our God in a time and a spirit of prayer. Good morning, God. We welcome you here with open arms, with open hearts, receiving all that you have for us. But also, God, we acknowledge that you call us. You feed them, you said, and love them as I have loved you. And you reminded us to give thanks in all things. So much good comes to the world and to us when we simply follow your ways. So we thank you, God. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of this church and fellowship and this opportunity to worship. God, so often it seems that in the community and in the national life around us, some of the graces and some of the characteristics that you call us to just seems like they're absent. But we know that you are there in the midst of it all. That the world is still in your control. And that all that is good comes from you. And we give you thanks. And so, God, we lift up our families. We lift up our church family. We lift up all of the difficulties and the concerns that weigh us down. And ask that you would take those from us. God, you've called us, your people, to be one in your name and to give glory to you and to seek you. And so, God, we repent. As your people, we acknowledge that we don't always do as you call us to, and certainly not perfectly. So we seek your guidance. We seek your forgiveness in our lives. You've offered us a deep and abiding peace and life that is abundant. And so, God, as we've come to worship in your name, we lift all of those concerns to you. 
We lift those people that we know of who are sick or hurting. Relationships that are in the midst of breaking. And we know that these things break your heart too, Lord. But you know all of those situations. And so we ask for your peace and your healing and your presence. You are good. And you are our God. Thank you. And now, God, we lift our voices together as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we'll continue worship with the song, I Lift My Hands.
Thank you, praise team, for that marvelous, marvelous music. If we're not in the mood now to worship God, I don't know what's going to take to do it. I call your attention now to our scripture in Matthew's gospel, the 14th chapter, verses 22 through 33. I'll be reading from the Common English Version, which is easy to understand because it is Common English. Right then, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat And go ahead to the other side of the lake while he dismissed the crowds. When he sent them away, he went up onto a mountain by himself to pray. Evening came and he was alone. Meanwhile, the boat, fighting a strong headwind, was being beaten by the waves and was already far from the land. Very early in the morning, he came to his disciples walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him, they were frightened. And some thought he was a ghost. They were so frightened, they screamed. Just then, Jesus spoke to them. Be encouraged. It's me. Don't be afraid. Peter replied, Lord, if it's you, order me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. Then Peter got out of the boat and was walking on the water towards Jesus. Well, when Peter saw the strong winds, he became frightened, and he began to sink, and he shouted, Lord, rescue me. And immediately Jesus reached out and grabbed him, saying, You man of weak faith, why did you begin to have doubts? When they got into the boat, the wind settled down, And those in the boat worshiped Jesus and said, You must be God's son. This is the word of God for the people of God. Our thanks be to God. May we pray. Oh, Lord, our God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. This text takes place right at the end of the text Kevin preached on last week. The feeding of the 5,000 men, actually the feeding of about 12,000 people or more is what experts say that was, with the loaves and fishes. And there being enough left over, 12 baskets full for the disciples. So the disciples had experienced this. Now how did it happen? Jesus had come to a deserted place because he needed to be alone. We've got to remember that Jesus was Emmanuel, God with us, fully God and fully human. And as a human, he had experienced the loss of his cousin. John the Baptist had been brutally murdered, beheaded by Herod Agrippa. Not in a trial, but to satisfy a foolish promise that Herod had made. And so Jesus needs to grieve, and he needs to connect with the Father. He went to this deserted place. This huge crowd showed up. He had compassion on them. Sometimes when we need to pray, we have to be compassionate first. And he was. He healed the sick. He taught some, and he fed the people. And then that text ends, and this one picks up. 
Jesus then immediately sent the disciples on ahead to go across to the other side of the lake. He stayed behind and went up on the mountain to pray. He prayed through the evening, into the night, and the morning came. He refreshed himself with the power of God the Father. He grieved over John, and then he looked and he knew the disciples are in a world of hurt. They're out there battling a headwind, and they don't know what to do. So he descends down the mountain and goes the shortest way he can to the disciples, walking across the water. And what do they do? They become frightened. They think he's a ghost. Now think about that a minute. There are no ghosts. Everything is alive. If you see something you think it's a ghost, it's either a demon, and they are around, or it's your imagination overworking. But the disciples thought he was a ghost, and they were crying out in fear. And Jesus settled them down and said, Oh, it's me. I'm coming to rescue you. I'm not a ghost. Peter spoke for the rest of them, and he said, If, if this is so, uh, command me to come to you walking on the water. And the Lord said, Come. Now, I want to break there and tell you something important. Walking on the water is only something God can do. If you've ever tried walking on the water, you realize it doesn't work unless it's a frozen lake, and that doesn't count. So Peter asked to do something that he really couldn't do as a human, and Jesus said to him, Come. He has the faith to step out of the boat, and he starts walking on the water. He's doing a God thing when he does that. But what happens? He feels the wind. He sees the roaring waves. And he takes his eyes off of Jesus, and he starts to sink. He says, Lord, help me. And right then, Jesus reaches out and grabs a hold of his arm. He's his Savior. He's not a ghost. And he lifts him up, and he says, man of little faith, why did you doubt? Why did you turn your eyes off of the power and watch the raging storm? And then they both got in the boat together and the rest of the disciples were bewildered and excited and said, Jesus must be the Son of God. Now, they had seen Jesus before miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. They had just experienced the blessing of the loaves and fishes and the miracle of that. And yet they say, this had convinced him that he must be the son of God? I think I would have been convinced before that, but I'm human and I make mistakes also. So let's understand this text a little more. Go into the depth of it. What we have is Jesus knew what his power source was. His power source was God. He was God in human form, and so he experienced everything humans experience, and he needed to connect to the Father often to regain his power. He knew the power source. There's only one source of power in the whole universe, but we have many ways of understanding power. Now, I want you to think about this. How many of you have ever walked out, maybe it's early in the morning and maybe it's in the middle of the day and you've got an appointment or maybe it's at the end of the day and you're leaving your work or, or whatever the situation and you go out to your car, you put the key in the ignition and you turn the key and you hear click, 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 click. And you don't have enough power in the battery to start the car. Now what do you do? Well, hopefully there's somebody around that, that has a jumper cable and they can jump you off of their battery. Or if you're home, maybe you have a, a portable battery that you can bring out and jump it off. Or, or you can call assistance. But without power, your car is not going anywhere. It has to be plugged into the power and the power starts from the battery. So the source is the battery. Now we all have cell phones iPads and other type of surface devices, laptops, they all need power. 
I know I've experienced where I've been using my phone a good bit during the day and I get ready to do something very important and send out an email or a text message or, or even make a phone call and the warning comes up, low battery. So what am I going to do? Yell and scream and run about or am I going to do something about it? Well, hopefully I'm at a source of power that I can plug in and charge it and move forward. I keep them in my car, I keep them at home all around, keep them in the office, but sometimes I'm not, and I have to improvise. Phones don't work, our computers don't work without power. And something else they need, they need Wi-Fi to work well, because they need to be connected with other devices. And without that, they're not what they should be. We're the same. We need to be connected one to another, and we need to be connected to the Father. We need to understand the source of all power. It is God. Now, I came to understand this in many ways, and I'm going to use some personal examples today, not to say how great I am, but to say I know what I know when I say I know it. First thing I will mention to you is I went through a year in combat and I know what it's like to have bullets flying around me and mortar shells exploding around me and all of the horrors of combat. And I know that somehow through all of that, God was with me and brought me through it. Not because I deserved it, but because God was God and God was faithful to me. Shortly after Lynn and I married... We were feeling a call to move from where we were and feeling a call to go to Kentucky. I checked it out and there was a job with the Kentucky Extension Service and I could get a, basically a transfer from the Georgia Extension Service to the Kentucky Extension Service and went and checked out the community and liked it and long story short, took the job. Several promises were made to us there. Uh, Lynn came in and they interviewed her and promised her that she would be hired in the school system. And, Everything seemed good. We finished out that half of year because I came there in early January and the summer came and we thought things would go good and summer passed and uh, Lynn hadn't got a contract and hadn't been asked to teach and uh, she had been told she'd be the second or third person hired and 10 people had been hired thus far and she wasn't among them. Uh, as promise that was made was broken. There were other promises that were made to us that uh, didn't follow through, and things didn't go nearly as smooth as we thought they would. But unique things happened in that circumstance. Uh, met the Catholic priest, and we became good friends and had many conversations, and he was supportive. Met the pastor of the First Baptist Church, and we became good friends, and he was supportive. And, and a lot of members of the Methodist Church there were friends of ours and, and supportive. And, and it was a, a mixed bag of things with broken promises and good friendships. We were in the middle of a recession as a nation then, and things were getting from bad to worse. Kentucky ran out of money, and there were no raises, and our money was going less and less every month. If I sat down and figured out the bills we had coming in and figured out the money we had coming in, there wasn't enough. But I kept praying and trusting, and somehow extra money came in every month, and we made it. To finally, I got a new job, and we moved back to Georgia, and I changed careers and became a space planner and started working on commission. It went well, and in a few months, we were starting to get ahead. So God was faithful to us and things moved well and I thought all was good. And then I got the call to the ministry. I thought at first I could satisfy that call if I was just a local pastor, but um, then I became convicted. I had a master's degree and the standard in the conference was to have a master's degree, a master's of divinity. So I knew I could do the work, and I prayed and prayed and made a hard decision. I gave up my job, our only primary source of income, and moved out on faith to believe I could make it through seminary without going broke. 
Fast forward two and a half years, and God was faithful, and that came to fruition. And we still had our house, and I was ready to move forward into full-time ministry in the North Georgia Conference. But while I was in seminary, I met a student that had the faith I couldn't believe. One day, the student shared with me, I need $347.57. And I know I'm going to get it today because I've got to pay the bill today. And I saw them a little later today, and they said, you know, I got a check for $270. The rest of it's going to come. I know it is to the very penny. And I saw him the next day, and I said, uh, well, how did it work out? And he said, got everything to the penny and got $10 extra. God is faithful. And I thought, whoa, your faith exceeds my faith, but God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Move forward into the work in the church and move to communities, and we ended up in a community right there at Lake Lanier. I've always wanted a sailboat, and so we got a sailboat and started sailing. One day I came out, and I had Lynn with me and one of our daughters, and we got in the boat, launched it from the point, and and went out into the main channel, and there was a good, strong wind blowing, and, boy, we were going downwind, and it was wonderful. And I happened to look behind us, and that strong wind was coming from a thunderstorm that was brewing. And I said, this is not good. We would reached kind of a narrow spot in the lake, and I said to Lynn, it's time to uh, come about. Uh, that's a sailor's talk for uh, make a U-turn. Uh, she said, okay, and went over what needed to be done, and she attempted to do it and made a full 360-degree circle. I said, well, let's try that again. And she said, okay. And she tried it again, and the same thing happened. And I said, well, let me try it. And so I moved over, and the same thing happened. So I said, okay, lower the sails. I got out our trolling molar that we had and hooded it and hooked it up and started. And uh, we moved from that spot we were in no more than 60 or 70 yards, and we were out of the narrow situation we were in I said hoist the sails again and we started sailing back into the wind except you can't sail into the wind you have to tack at a 45 degree angle to get back and as I was doing that I kept looking up at the storm and I could see thunder or hear thunder and see lightning brewing and I said to Lynn and Rebecca what are you doing they said we're praying like crazy and I said keep it up I am too, and we kept moving back and forth, and and I thought the wind would have already overcome us and and the storm would be upon us, but it wasn't. We got back to the the launching point and and managed to get our craft out on the trailer and everything stored away, and still the storm hadn't come. That storm had moved around in a circle and had missed us. Now, there's power in prayer. Now, you can say that's coincidence if you want to, but I'll tell you there's power in prayer. I've seen the power in so many ways. I've had wrecks that could have killed me. Lynn's had a wreck that could have killed her. But we were spared, and I can't tell you how come we were spared, except God had a plan for us, had to be it, and that plan hadn't been fulfilled yet. Power rises with God. So here we are today. We've got this pandemic going on, and everything we know that is normal is turned upside down. And we keep thinking, when are things going to be back to normal? And then other people say, well, this is the new normal. And we say, well, I don't like the new normal. I hope it changes. But will it? I don't know. But what I know is God is with us. One thing that's happened over the last year and a half to two years is From time to time, not even once a week, but sometimes it's two times a week, I'll wake up in the middle of the night, and when it first happened, I tried to twist and turn and get in a comfortable way where I could get back to sleep, and I couldn't do it. I fussed a little bit, and I got up then and started doing some reading and praying, and and I found over a time with this that if I would just get as comfortable as I could and start praying, things work out. That happens quite often, but like I say, not every week. 
It happened just two days ago, and I woke up. It was a little after 3 in the morning, and I couldn't get back to sleep, so I started praying. And I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed about a number of things, as many people as I could remember, as many circumstances as I could remember, everything I could remember I prayed for. And I know more than an hour, hour and a half passed, and a miraculous thing happened. I fell asleep. I awakened a little later with the alarm, and I was refreshed. Not quite as refreshed in one sense as I would have been with a full night's sleep, but in another sense, I was more refreshed because I had been in that communion with God and the power of God was flowing through me and I could feel it and I knew it. So I was revived. I was ready to go, even if I might be a little bit tired. And so I know what the power of God is. And I asked you now, what do you need today? Now, there's a lot of things that the world's going to tell us we need. And some of those things we may can buy and enjoy, and that's okay. Some of those things we may not need at all and don't need to buy and enjoy, and we need to discern on that. But all of those things have a life to them, I guarantee it. Everything in the universe has a life, including the universe itself. It has a beginning point, and it has an ending point. We may not know when it's coming, but it's there. So the important thing is to realize everything has a lifespan but one thing, and that one thing is God. God is eternal, and within us is the Spirit of God, the very breath of God, God's Spirit, and that is like God eternal. So we are all spiritually eternal beings that are caught in an earthly body. Our body will perish, but our spirit will not. So what is it you need? I know what I need. I need to connect to the power, and that is God. Some people don't know that, and they need to know it, and they need to know it right now. What's more important, the spectacular or the kingdom of God? Well, that's an easy question to answer. It's the kingdom of God. The question is, where are you today? What do you need today? Do you need more power? Do you need to confess to God? Do you need to connect with God? God is always there ready to connect with you. So think about that. Dwell on that. As you think about the questions, three important questions. Do you, like Jesus, need time alone with God the Father? Are you frightened by the storms of life? And have you the courage to step out in faith? Those are three very important questions, thought-provoking. Think about them yourself. Share them with your families and with your friends. And think about them as the praise band comes up and leads us in the closing song. Lord, I need you.
temptation comes my way. When I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and say. So go forward today, and the one thing you need to plug into the power of God, go forward and be people of faith. If you think you have no faith, you've got faith in something, to put faith in God, move forward, and God will be with you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. All things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You make.